Hi, my name is Marco Rizzo, and I'm a um, <clears throat> orthopedic and hand surgeon here at the Mayo Clinic. Um, I'm going to talk to, uh, briefly about a, a subject called uh, Dupuytren's contracture. Uh, it typically infects uh, folks of Northern European ancestry and men more often than women. It uh, is typically a painless disease, and, and um, most folks uh, present uh, in, in two patterns of, uh, uh, in my clinic. One of, uh, is an folks who have early disease where it presents as a nodule in the palm and they're really not sure what it is. And another uh, group of patients are patients who've known they've had it for a long time and uh, now have limited motion as a result of the, uh, of the contracture. And effectively that's what happens. The nodule can evolve into cords and fortunately it doesn't happen very rapidly. It takes time but the nodules evolve into cords and ultimately will draw the fingers down, limiting the patient's ability to extend and open their hand. There are uh, tried and true treatment options for this. Uh, uh, the, the one that's been used the longest has been surgery, and uh, uh, surgery uh, is aimed at uh, exposing uh, the cord and the diseased fascia, and ultimately uh, re uh, removing it so that it no longer acts as a tether or contracture to the hand. Uh, it does carry uh, its own set of risks, uh, risk of anesthesia, there's risks associated with surgery, every surgery, including this one. And uh, unfortunately, uh, surgery doesn't really cure the disease and recurrence is a common theme. As a result of some of the frustrations associated with surgery, uh, newer treatment options have been, uh, have been uh, popularized over the past decade. One of them is a needle aponeurotomy procedure, which is an office procedure which uh, is aimed at releasing the cord. It doesn't remove the cord, it releases the cord. And it is done uh, in a way that uh, can be done in the office by numbing up the skin and the finger along the cord in evenly spaced intervals of about a centimeter or so. And with a small amount of numbing medicine, you can anesthetize the skin while preserving the nerves uh, that provide feeling to the fingertip. It's important to have that preservation so that when you're doing the needle procedure that you can get feedback from the patient about any sensations of electrical shock that uh, may indicate that the needle is close to the nerve. Bear in mind that the needle aponeurotomy, had, while advantageous in some ways, is a blind procedure and is based on feel. And uh, there are nerves and arteries on both sides of the cord, typically, uh, that that are at risk. Um, so we use that information to help us. In addition, when I do the needle aponeurotomy procedure, I do it with a colleague, Dr. Bro, who has an ultrasound and maps out where the vessels and nerves are, as the nerves run with the vessels typically, uh, to uh, make the procedure as safe as possible. Nevertheless, those, those structures are at risk. After anesthetizing along the cord, you use the needle as a knife. The bevel of the needle is then inserted where the skin is anesthetized, and you effectively cut the cord at each of those levels. It's akin to cutting a loaf of bread blindly. You're cutting maybe 80 or 90% of it at this level, 80 or 90% at this level, 80 or 90% at this level, and, and so on. And effectively, hopefully, it's not the same 80 or 90% at each of those levels. So now you've uh, rendered the cord weak enough so that you can do a forceful extension and ultimately free up the hand. It's a procedure that uh, can be very effective and uh, certainly uh, avoids many of the risks associated with surgery. However, since the cord is not being removed, it, it can very likely grow back. The recurrence rates that we've uh, discussed, although we don't really have a lot of science behind, is approximately 25% in two years or 30% in two years. A lot of those recurrences aren't as bad as the original uh, uh, time when, uh, when the patients do present. And a lot of folks would suggest that you could simply do the needle procedure again if, the, if they were to recur. Approximately a year and a half ago, there, uh, a new uh, medication called Zyaflex uh, uh, got FDA approval uh, to be utilized in the treatment of Dupuytren's contracture. Uh, Zyaflex is a collagenase. It's an enzyme that eats the co collagen. So, in my mind, it's effective to a chemical dissolution of the cord rather than a mechanical cutting of the cord that you would see with a needle aponeurotomy. Patients who've had needle aponeurotomy and also collagenase seem to report that the collagenase is a more pleasant experience for them overall. The uh, Zyaflex is a single injection that's done at the point where the cord is maximally prominent. and. Um, 
it effectively covers about a five millimeter area uh, longitudinally of the cord and the patient uh, receives the injection and comes back the next day for hopeful release of the cord. The injection at the, at the day, uh, the first day, uh, the first visit, is a little bit uncomfortable. The enzyme requires 18 to 24 hours to, to affect its, its, uh, its uh, dissolution of the cord and the patient comes back the next day and, and their hand is appropriately swollen and bruised, um, much like uh, it had been whacked with a mallet. Effectively at that point I, I can anesthetize the hand and release the cord. The tendons deep to the, to the cord are also made of collagen as well as the skin and those structures may thin, particularly the skin. Um, hopefully the the tendon uh, will not, if uh, as provided that the injection isn't too deep and is focused mainly in the cord, the tendon can generally be preserved. The collagenase itself is also uh, expensive. It's important that uh, beforehand uh, the patient understands uh, what the cost would be to them and what the, how much their insurance would cover as uh, the injection itself can be cost prohibitive. Finally, the injection is only allowed to be in, uh, performed uh, in one person every 30 days. So if you have multiple cords and multiple and both hands affected, uh, it would be uh, you'd have to prioritize which cords you'd like to treat and then as you get successive treatments, uh, you would have to come back 30 days for repeat injections for other cords. There's a lot of exciting new things uh, in terms of treatments for dupatrins, and I, I think it's uh, something that uh, over time we'll gather more information about which treatment may be better than others uh, as we look at needle abenotomy a little closer as well as the collagenase. And while I still perform surgery, many patients have opted for some of the uh, newer uh, uh, treatment options uh, for obvious reasons. Thank you.